Hello, and welcome to the How to Get an Analytics Job podcast, where we will help you discover where you fit into the analytics marketplace, what skills you should build, and how to land your analytics dream job. I'm John David, analytics agency owner and educator. And I'm Elizabeth Illig, a private career coach and higher education professional. In this podcast, we will not only help you land your next analytics job, but we will give you the tools and strategies to level up your career. Hey guys, before we launch our first podcast episode, I actually wanted to give you a little bit of a teaser of what's going to be coming up over the next six months or so. But I'm actually going to hand it off to Elizabeth to walk you through our content structure. For the next six months, we are going to be tackling a different topic or theme every month. So our first month in January, we were talking about discovery. In February, we're going to be focusing on building skills. Next, we'll move to networking. In April, we will talk about branding. And in May, we will focus on interviewing. Finally, we are going to round this out with leveling up in June. So not only letting you know the skills and things that you need to know to land an analytics job, but also how to level up once you get that job. And we wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of who our guests are going to be for each of these themes. So in the discovery theme, we have Sharon Vogler, who is at Wake Forest University, and she's going to talk with us a little bit about entry-level analytics jobs. That's a really popular topic that we as career coaches get a lot of questions about. What are those jobs? What are the descriptions of those jobs? So Elizabeth, let's elaborate a little bit more on what is discovery? Yeah, good question. So discovery is really two phases or two prongs. The first is self-discovery and the second is discovery about the marketplace. So in self-discovery, we're thinking about who you are as a professional, what skills and strengths you bring to the table, what experiences you have. And then in the marketplace discovery, we're wanting to figure out how you fit into the marketplace. So how those strengths will relay themselves and will play out in a career. Speaking of discovery, why are you uniquely situated to talk about this topic? I have been working with the Wake Forest students who are in the Masters of Business Analytics program in the online program. So I know a lot about this field, have learned a ton from working with those students, and know the common questions that students ask in this field. Well, you've actually been working in higher education for longer than that. Absolutely. So before that, I worked in higher education for High Point University as a career advisor. And then I started a private practice about two years ago to do career advising, career coaching. So I have a lot of experience in the space. And then in month two, we're going to talk about skill building. And we are wandering into my area of expertise. So over the past three or four years, I've actually been teaching analytics on top of actually my consulting agency. So I'm actually pivoting into a new space where I'm building out data infrastructure for medium and small size organizations and then helping them place a full-time analyst. So I very in-depthly understand the marketplace and what skills you really need to build. We actually have a really interesting guest that's going to be coming on by the name of Tyler, Tyler Lubbin. He has been working in the analytics space for years and years and years. And he's got a really interesting perspective on building skills. So he just took on new projects, and that helped him expand his skill set. Another way to frame that up is you can get paid to learn new skills. So you win coming and going in that situation. John David is uniquely positioned to give us some great content about building skills and interview some folks in that space. But John David, I know we also need to talk about networking. That's really important. It's something that helps folks find jobs. And I wonder who we're going to be talking to in this networking theme. So I have been the Tableau user group leader in Greensboro for about, I think, a year and a half to two years now. The person who brought me into that world is Christopher Scott. And he is the Tableau user group leader in the Raleigh-Durham area. And his Tableau user group is huge. And they actually do a segment called Have a Job, Need a Job. And he's going to be coming on the podcast to talk about how you can use networking events such as a user group to really build out you know, the relationships you have. And I, I feel like I need to be a little bit proactive and say that 
these user groups aren't transactional. It's not like you just go there and you ask for a job and they give you a job. There's a concept around relationship building in that it's not going to be a one and done thing. You need to show up, you need to be a part of the community, and you need to give some value. That's absolutely right. I think networking is important, but it's not a transactional process. It's something that you have to cultivate a relationship with folks, get to know them, understand what it is they are doing, and that's what's going to be key to you in your career and in your job search. After we tackle networking in March, we're going to move to branding in April. And this is what people typically think about when they think about applying to jobs. This is all about selling yourself on your resume, your cover letter, and your LinkedIn profile so that you can land an interview. We have some really amazing folks who are going to be on to talk with us about how to market yourself. One of those is Bridget Holcomb, who is actually my business partner at Holcomb and Illig LLC. And she's going to talk with us about what to put in your cover letter so that employers will actually want to bring you into the room to interview you. I've actually got a question. So what do you use for cover letters? In terms of content or template? Well, I mean, we've already record, recorded some of the Discovery episodes. And one of the things you touch on are career assessments, Clifton Strength Finders. So is she going to talk about bringing in those skills and unique personality traits? She's going to talk a little bit about what you should include on your cover letter. And she's also going to talk with us about how to showcase your unique experiences and strengths. So how to showcase to an employer that you have the experience and the strengths and the skills that they would want in this particular position that you're applying for. Cool. The next topic we're going to cover is interviewing. And I feel like that is such a popular in-demand topic. It's one of my top current YouTube videos now is how to explain your case studies in an interview setting. What we're going to be doing is actually interviewing people who are on the opposite side of the interviewing table. For example, Alexander Moy is the Assistant Vice President of Enterprise Analytics for a pretty large banking institution in you know, the Greensboro Triad area. And he's going to talk about the, the different steps and how they screen candidates, how they actually bring them in, assess their skills, and then the final point, which I didn't really think too much about, how they assess are you going to be a good organizational fit. I think that's really important too. Interviewing isn't just about what you bring to the table. If you have the experience and the technical skills that are needed to do this job, but it's also about cultural fit. Are you somebody that my office will like, that my team will like, that fits in with our work culture? So I think it's important to hear from people who are doing the interviewing so you know as an applicant what you need to be doing when you are being interviewed. Finally, we're going to tackle leveling up in June. And this is a topic that I think a lot of people don't think too much about. They get the job, they're excited, they are ready to go to work, but part of your career is leveling up once you have that first analytics job and making this truly into an analytics career. So John David, I know you have a ton of really great people coming on in the leveling up section. Who would you want to highlight for our listeners? So there's two that actually come to mind for me. And this is an interesting anecdote in that the very first student I ever had for my online courses is going to be coming on and talking about how he got a job in an organization. It was in a marketing role and how he pivoted into a marketing analytics role by taking on additional responsibilities. So at first he started just managing campaigns, then he started um, analyzing what was going on got access to their Tableau license, and then pivoted into more of a marketing analytics role. And then the other person that I find really fascinating is Tyler Lubin again. So he's been working remotely as an analyst for, I think, going on two or three years now. So this is a really fascinating episode in that he talks about how he used to live in Atlanta, which is a pretty big metro, a relatively high cost of living area, he eventually negotiated a remote contract with that company, and he moved to Playa del Carmen. So there are two things going on here. Number one, he's moving into a much smaller city. And number two, there is a currency multiplier going on. So his money is all of a sudden going three or four, maybe even five times as far. 
So once you actually get into the analytics space and establish yourself as an expert, there's some really cool things you can do, and Tyler's going to talk about his experience in depth. A lot of great content coming up for you all. We just wanted to give you the highlights. Of course, there are many experts that we didn't mention, and so we hope that you will listen in, tune in to hear from those folks in the upcoming months. Thanks.